Okay, good day audience. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is your trainer, SBR trainer, Mustafa Ahmed Mirchawala from Mirchawala's Hub of Accountancy. Uh, today we are going to discuss, today we are going to discuss question number three of September, December 2020 attempt, a very, very latest past paper, okay? And this past paper is full of intangible asset, intangible asset plus IFRS 5 plus IS 36. Normally these standards are also connected. And as predicted, I've earlier I predicted uh, that because of this COVID thing, there is a lot of restructuring. There is a lot of closure of branches, right? So that's why IFRS 5 is expected because of this COVID thing. Listen, because of this COVID thing, uh, big lockdowns and a lot of disturbance that's why this is the hint of impairment so is 36 is also expected because normally acca gives you question related to what 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 is happening in the global environment right so this is the hot topics similarly you might have observed that in this covid era in this 2020 2021 intangible intent technological stocks went up apple stock google Facebook, these uh, Netflix, these all technological stocks went up and technological stocks are highly dependent on intangible assets. So now intangible asset is also a very hot issue. So in this in this question, they have, re as this is the recent question, so exa examiner has covered all these recent issues. Okay, right? So you can predict paper through seeing the environment, what is happening in the environment, right? Now, Question number three. Question number three. Cor Corbel Company. Corbel Company trades. Corbel Company trades in the perfume sector. It has recently acquired a company that means a takeover for its brand. For its brand, Jangi purchased two additional brand names and has announced plans to close its Italian store. See, that means there is a takeover. There is a takeover. And what is the need of takeover to strengthen our brand by, by acquiring another brand, by acquiring another brand to give strength to us, right? And they are also going to close some Italian stores because they are in losses. So this closure giving me hint, this closure giving me hint of restructuring, this closure giving me hint of IFRS 5 discontinued operation. Now, Carable Company also opened a new store on a prime site in Paris, in Paris. The current financial year end is 31st December X7. The current financial year end is 31st of December X7. Okay. Now, this is the first paragraph. On 1st of January, acquisition of Jengi Company. This is the first issue. On 1st of January X7, Corbel Company acquired 100% of Jengi Company. This is September 2020 past paper, September and December 2020 past paper. Listen, on 1st January X7, Corbel Company acquired 100% of Jengi Company. Both companies operate in the perfume sector. Okay. Corbel Company intends to merge the manufacture of Jengi Company's products into its own facilities and close Jengi Company's manufacturing unit. Now, what does it mean? You have acquired that company, Corbel acquired Jengi Company, and what is the need, purpose of acquisition? We'll close the manufacturing unit. We'll close the manufacturing unit of that Jengi Company, and we'll do manufacturing ourselves, but still we'll use their brand name, but still we'll use their brand name, okay, right? So this will create synergies as well because now there will be a single manufacturing unit of us and we will be serving more people so work will be done in quantities work will be done in quantities just think previously previously parent company now listen Okay, so previously they were they were working previously they were working separately two manufacturing new units and now there will be only one manufacturing units one manufacturing unit so that definitely this will create synergy this will create cost cutting okay but definitely we'll be using their brand name now Jenny company's brand name is well known in the sector 
retailing at premium prices and therefore carbel company will continue to sell products under the jangis brand name after after its registration has been transferred after its registration has been transferred and its manufacturing units have been integrated the directors of corbel company believes that most of the value of jangi company was derived from the brand and there is no indication of the impairment of brand at 31st december x7 31st december x7 this is the story this is the story i hope you got some points i hope you got some points that parent company parent company is acquiring parent company is acquiring running business of another company okay and what is the objective of this to take over to close down the ma their manufacturing facility because now there will be only one manufacturing unit and secondly secondly to merge secondly to merge the brand and to increase the sales to increase the sales volume to increase the sales value volume okay now wait and let's read the requirement number 1 let's read the requirement number 1 it's very general requirement see this describe the main challenges challenges in recognizing and measuring intangible assets such as brand such as brand specifically they are talking about brands now wait in the statement of financial position 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 now wait let me explain you something listen you know in your very basic studies in your beginning studies you have studied this that internally generated brand internally generated brands and internally generated goodwill internally generated brand and internally generated goodwill cannot be capitalized cannot be capitalized you know why what is the logic behind it they are intangible asset yes internally generated brand and internally generated goodwill are are intangible asset obviously why because they meet the criteria of intangibles yes they they don't have any physical substance please active they don't have any physical substance number 1 they are identifiable separable yes they are identifiable and separable they meet this definition they are non monetary but what's the problem what's the problem why we can't why we can't recognize why we can't recognize internally generated brands or internally generated goodwill in our books why it's not allowed it's not allowed listen the reason because is 38 says that intangible assets are initially recorded at cost intangible assets are initially recorded at cost intangible assets are initially recorded at cost and you know you cannot calculate the cost of internally generated brand or internally generated goodwill you cannot calculate the cost of internally generated brand or internally generated goodwill why let me give you example listen my goodwill i am i i have been teaching in now for in more than 40 40 plus countries so definitely many students comes in in all in each and every next time we get new students so th that's a goodwill goodwill that's why new students are coming it's a goodwill that's why new students are coming that's why you guys are attending the class now how did i make this goodwill think over it i i've been teaching for last 15 years and since in in these last 15 years i have given service to students the students message me i reply them sometimes they message me late night i late night reply them so this is this this all service creates this goodwill can i calculate listen to me and think over it can i calculate the cost of all these efforts no how can i calculate the cost of late night message how can i calculate the cost of thank you greetings smile so we cannot calculate we cannot calculate the cost of cost of internally generated cost of internally generated brand or goodwill that's why we cannot capitalize this is the real issue this is the reason you must know this sometime they ask in the interview as well so first issue which we will be discussing here listen is describe the main challenges in recognition in recognition that this is you cannot recognize you cannot recognize internally generated brand but yes you can recognize the purchase brand you can recognize the purchase brand what is the example 
URP company and U acquired S company. URP company and U acquired S company. And S company has internally generated brand. URP company and U acquired S company. And yes, S company has let us say internally generated brand. So that that brand has not already recognized in the S company because for S company, for S company, that brand is internally generated. But as parent company is buying, parent company is buying the running business of S company. So for S com for parent company, it's purchase brand. For parent company, this brand is purchase brand. So yes, parent company can recognize it at fair value. Parent company can recognize it at fair value at the date of acquisition. And this you have done in your previous studies, even in the F7, in the F7 course, right? And this will be treated as a fair value adjustment. This will be treated as a fair value adjustment at the date of acquisition. This will be treated as fair value adjustment at the date of acquisition. Remember how, let me explain you, listen, 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 listen. See, for example, you have bought this company for 100. This company has building of 20. This company has machine of 20. Now, 100 minus, minus 20 minus 20, goodwill is 60. Goodwill is 60. Right now, we have paid for the whole running company, we have paid 100. For the whole complete company, we have paid 100. Now, out of this 100, out of this 100, building is 20 and machine is 20. So that means the residue is goodwill, right? This is the first calculation. Now, as I was doing this calculation, suddenly my accountant came. Suddenly my accountant came. Say, uh, he said, sir, there is one problem. I said, what? Sir, out of this 100, we got this building for 20 and machine for 20. And yes, we got one brand. We got one brand of 30. We got one brand. Brand is also present in S company and that is separately identifiable. So automatically, I would say now my goodwill is 30. Now my goodwill is 30. Remember, you used to do this in your F7 studies, basic studies that at the date of acquisition, at the date of acquisition, when parent company acquires S company, when parent company acquires S company, and if there is any inter in internally generated brands with S company, so parent company recognize it, parent company recognize it, right? Because for parent company, it's purchase brand. Because for parent company, that brand is purchase brand, okay? So in this part, see this part, this is very, very general, general part. In this part, describe the main challenges in recognizing. So first of all, you will discuss that you cannot, you cannot recognize internally generated brand and you will have to give the logic as well, which I have given you because IS 38 says in ten, internally generated brands, IS 38 says intangible assets are recorded at cost. And for internally generated brands and goodwill, you cannot you cannot record the cost. You cannot calculate the cost. I gave you example of my 15 years teaching. I gave you example of my 15 years teaching that I cannot calculate the exact cost, okay? That's why the cost cannot be measured reliably. Now, the second issue in this case, recognizing and the second issue is measuring, measuring. Listen, you know, in this case of parent and subsidiary, see this case, when parent company acquires running business of S company, when parent company acquires running business of S company, that means parent company has bought S company. So for parent company, this brand is purchase brand. And yes, you cannot record, you can record purchase brand. And yes, you can record purchase brand, it's allowed. So now at the date of takeover, parent company will calculate the fair value of this brand. Parent company will calculate the fair value of this brand. So now the, a new challenge, how to calculate the fair value of the brand. Let me, let me remind you some IFRS 13 thing, how to calculate the fair value of brand. Just listen. Do you think that the brand has an active market brand brand as an active market? No, not at all. Active market means what do you mean by active market? Active market means that brand is sold on a daily basis. That brand name is sold on daily basis. That's not possible. Yes. Wait. Perfumes are sold on daily basis, but perfume is inventory. Perfume is inventory. I'm talking about the brand. I'm talking about the brand name, like the franchise, like the franchise rights of brand name. 
So that franchise rights are given after every six months or one year. A new store opens after six months or one year. So it this is not active market. Brand is never traded actively in the market. Brand. I'm not talking about the inventory. I'm not talking about the jeans. No, I'm talking about the brand name. So there is no active market of brand name. It's not traded. That's why you cannot calculate. You cannot calculate fair value through active market or through quoted market. That's not possible. So definitely, you need to use different valuation techniques. You need to use different valuation techniques. For example, wait, like future cash flows of present value, like present value of future cash flows, and such such techniques to be used. Such techniques to be used. Such techniques to be used. Okay, giving you thirty seconds to settle down, to think over it, to think over it, please. So, my dear student, two words on which you have to discuss: recognizing and measuring. Recognizing and measuring. And one small thing which I would recommend you to discuss here is cost model and revaluation model. You know, in IS thirty eight there are two models. In IS thirty eight there are two measurement models. One is cost model and one is revaluation model. You all must know what I am going to say now. Listen. In IS thirty eight, if you want to apply revaluation model, in IS thirty eight, if you want to apply revaluation model, then in that case, for that intangible asset, there must be active market. This is the requirement of IS thirty eight that if you want to apply revaluation model on a certain asset, then that asset must have an active market. Active market. do you think brand has active market no brand does not have any active market that's why brands cannot be cannot be recorded using revaluation model right this issue should also be discussed so let's let's see the points let's see the points i we have just discussed this first requirement we have just discussed this first first paragraph we have just we haven't done the whole question only the first paragraph and the first requirement first paragraph and the first requirement see this now let me show you how to write it listen see this see the screen see the screen please first of all first of all very go very easy simply write the recognition criteria i told you that intangible assets is 38 says that intangible assets are recorded at cost c recognition criteria of intangible asset is that they are recorded in they are initially recorded at cost 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 what do, what do you mean by cost do you know the meaning of cost cost means whatever we are paying whatever we are paying to acquire whatever we are paying to acquire okay so for internally generated brands and goodwill cost attributable to them cannot be measured reliably yes that's a fact i told you my last 15 years 15 years of service i cannot cal the goodwill which i have generated the goodwill which i have generated i cannot calculate the cost it was lot of efforts lot of multiple efforts in day in night through message through talk yes through help right that's why they cannot be recognized in the financial statement according to is 38 according to is 30 according to is 38 right now but purchase brands can be capitalized see you have clearly identified but in that case also many valuation issues wait purchase brands we cannot we can we can we can capitalize but normally purchase brands are cap, are acquired through takeover through takeover so when parent company acquires subsidiary company when parent company acquires subsidiary company parent company values the brand at fair value at the date of acquisition so now there is a issue of valuation now there is a issue of valuation now wait also i have discussed the intent is 38 allows two models for intangible assets because in the question it was written about the measurement in the question it was written about the measurement issue so that's why i have discussed the two model the first one is cost model and second one is revaluation model see this but revaluation model is only allowed if active market for that intangible asset exists 
एक्टिव मार्केट फॉर दैट इन टेंजेबल एसेट एक्सिस इन केस ऑफ ब्रांड एज दे आर नॉट ट्रेडेड एक्टिवली दैट्स वाई देर इज नो एक्टिव मार्केट ऑफ ब्रांड ऑफ ब्रांड ओके ना होल्ड ना होल्ड होल्ड हेयर पॉज but still there is no active market but still at the date of take over at the date of take over you need to calculate the fair value at the date of take over parent company needs to calculate fair value of the brand to in order to make the entry in order to recognize that brand okay so how we can calculate see also each brand is different from other brand yes the shoes brand are different the clothing brands are different the shampoo brand are different different characteristics so one brand there is no similarity there is there is very less similarities between brands okay so that's why you cannot use the fair value of one brand for another you cannot use the fair value of one brand for another so in that case in that case the best thing is valuation technique like present value issue like future cash flows present value the best thing that's why it is very difficult to value when at the time of take over see the issue fair value of brand is cal is calculated then normally the company uses company uses open your eyes valuation techniques which are complex which are complex measurement is more complex when intangible assets are not based on legally enforceable rights listen listen sometimes it happens that intangible assets we don't have any legally enforceable rights legally enforceable rights so when you don't have any legally enforceable rights that means the future cash flows are not certain the future economic benefit is not certain so in that case it is very difficult in that case it is very difficult to value that that intangible asset to calculate that future cash flows because they are risky you are not sure you are not sure whether you will get the those future cash flows or not now sometimes the buyer of brand has different intentions like now wait sometimes what happens when parent company acquires the brand parent company acquires the brand they have different different objectives in their mind why why they are acquiring in this question let me i'll show you the second paragraph i'll show you the second paragraph see see the second paragraph now see this see this see the second paragraph acquisition of perfume brand in addition to now owning the jangi brand Cordell company has acquired two other perfume brand names to prevent rival companies acquiring them listen just think over it why we are buy, why we are acquiring more perfume brands so that so that our competitors do not acquire them just just for defensive purpose we we are not interested in acquiring new brands but we are just acquiring these perfume brands so that our competitors stay away from them our competitors stay away from this brand the first perfume locus has been sold successfully for many years and has established market and the second perfume has been named this issue is different leave it this is related to second requirement but just these two lines first two lines first two lines of this second paragraph what does it means why are we acquiring the brands these new perfume brands we are just acquiring these new perfume brands so that our competitors stay away that means we are we are not directly interested in brands so our intentions are different our intentions are different in this case so these intentions also affect the fair value these intentions will also affect the fair value because now we we are not going to we are not going to do more marketing for these these brands which we have acquired see this now now read it sometimes the buyer buyer means parent company buyer means parent company buyer of brand has different intentions like corbel bought for defensive reasons corbel bought for see this corbel bought for defensive defensive reasons so that our our competitors do not acquire them and this thing also affects future cash flows and valuation future cash flows and valuation now just read it just read it for for a minute then i'll go forward
now listen that's why that's why intangible asset is a technical aspect of accounting now see just think about practically see this this phone is a tangible asset you can touch you can touch this pen is a tangible asset we can see but intangible asset is a asset which you cannot touch even sometimes you cannot see so it's a perception based asset intangible asset is a perception based asset wait let me give you example i ask uh, let let us say we are sitting together please involve involve you will understand we are sitting together and we are discussing about kfc brand so you ask me how do you like kfc i said it's okay but maybe in our in in our gathering there are some people who like kfc a lot so it's about the choice it's about the perception it's about the taste of people so in for intangible assets like goodwill like goodwill and these things it's very difficult to value because different people perceives that intangible asset differently wait 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 one more example we have seen this there are some teachers few students like them a lot few students say they he is not a good teacher he is not a good teacher we don't like them at, at all like him at all so it it happens it happens so intangible asset these goodwill these brands they are linked to human perception human taste as well so when there is a there is an element of human taste human perception so this is very subjective thing so that's why it is also difficult to value them that's why it is also difficult to value them i hope you got my point so one more practical problem arises in case of internally generated intangible asset which are not recognized because in real sorry sorry first paragraph red pen that's why intangible asset is a technical aspect of accounting as you cannot see it plus it is a perception based asset means for one party party in for one party's view it is asset but not for other party some people say yes we like them and others say we don't so th this is also one very big problem very very big and very scoring point now one last extra point i would like to raise i would like to raise and this is the reality you know inter i'm talking about internally generated brand it is not recognized in your books internally generated brand is not recognized in your books if it is my brand if it is my internally generated brand i cannot recognize in my book okay but still i am getting benefit still i am getting benefit from that brand i am getting benefit from the brand but i have not recognized it so when i am getting benefit that means i am earning from that brand it's increasing my sales it's increasing my profits it it's increasing my eps okay and when it's increasing my eps so it's increasing my share price as well so the market analyst market analyst have included included this internal internally generated brands in my valuation when they are valuing my share price but when you see the sofp when you see my sofp it's it's not present so this all this thing also this thing also confuses the users this thing also confuses the users you are not getting i repeat listen for example if a brand is internally generated for me then i will not recognize in my books not recognize because i is 38 38 does not allow okay but still that brand is giving me benefit i am earning through that brand so that when when i am earning through that brand my sales will go up my profits will go up my eps will go up so my share price will also go up so the market analyst those who are those who are uh, calculating the share prices and predicting the future they will include that brand in their calculation and in my share price in my share price stock market price the value of this brand is included but when you see my sofp my statement of financial position that brand is not not present so this this also cre creates clash this also creates clash in the mind of users and one more thing for analyst it's also very difficult to value this brand because it's not present it's not present but still we are getting benefit now read it one more practical problem arises in case of internally generated intangibles which are not recognized because in reality they do exist yes they do exist so many analyst includes them in their valuations but they are not present in sofp
just think student just think internally generated brands are not present in your sofp but yes they they are reflected in your share prices because you are enjoying the benefit of this internally generated brand use your brain if you see my the name of my institute is mirchawala's hub of accountancy i am if we have some star teachers with us so we have not recognized the goodwill or brand of their teachers but yes we are earning from that teachers think over it so they, we these brands are not in your sofp but they are reflecting in our the, the performance of this brand is reflecting in your income statement sales profits and then share price and all did you understand did you understand this part yes this is technical yes this is technical it's professional sbr level did you understand this part please write on the chat box those who joined late i'll provide them recording those who joined late i'll provide them recording don't worry but now from from this part be be very attached okay now let's move to the remaining part of the question now listen this this is the second paragraph this is the second paragraph students in addition to now owning the jangi brand corbel company has acquired two other perfume brand names to prevent rival companies acquiring them okay simply we have write, written the intention the first perfume locust has been sold successfully for many years and has for many year that means it's a very old brand very famous old brand and has an established established market the second is a new perfume which has been named after a famous famous actor famous actor famous actor clara who intends to promote the product the directors of corbel company believe that the two perfume brand names have have indefinite life very very interesting issue and i can assure you this thing came in 2008 i saw this question in 2008 i forgot the name the name of was uh, from s i think i forgot the name in 2008 december 2000 attempt eight attempt or june 2008 this question exactly exactly this question came in exam it's coming again it's a, it has been repeated again and in my lectures this issue is discussed in my lectures this issue is discussed but don't worry i'll explain you read the second requirement discuss the following accounting issues relating to corbel company's financial statements for the year ended 31st december x7 in accordance with ifrs standards in according with ifrs standards number 1 point first point whether the jengi company brand name will be accounted for separately from goodwill on acquisition first issue first issue wait parent company students i i really want your energy now very extreme focus extreme focus towards me parent company this is related to the first paragraph parent company just acquired this jengi company and this jengi company holds one brand holds one brand so they are saying they are saying whether the jengi company brand name will be accounted for separately from goodwill on acquisition wait this issue i have discussed here see this all of you this issue i have discussed in this in this in this in this in this in this diagram in this diagram i have discussed yes yes you can record it separately you can record this brand separately if it meets the definition of intangible assets and if its valuation can be done separately yes if it meets the definition of intangible asset yes and and listen and the fair value of this brand can be calculated then you can easily then you can easily re record it separately yes this is the answer i'll discuss this don't worry now the second issue second issue of this question and whether it should be whether it should be accounted for as a separate cash generating unit after the integration of the manufacturing units 
excellent excellent part excellent part you know can can you guys tell me the cgu thing can do you know the do you know the def definition of cgu smallest listen to me smallest group of assets that generates independent cash flows smallest and identifiable group of assets that generate independent cash flows and they are not dependent on any other thing they are independent independent cash flows now listen to me just a brand name look at me just a brand name without manufacturing facility without any facility just a name just a name can that name generate independent cash flows big no big no big no 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 why giving you example listen let us say there is a shop there is a shop and in that shop big board of mcdonald is out placed outside there is a shop and there is a board of mcdonald outside that shop but when you entered in that shop there is no burgers there are no burgers there are no fries there are no ice cream nothing no facility available just mcdonald name is written will you give any cash will you buy anything no that name is nothing without that combination that name is nothing without the service the service facilities and all <laughs> not getting student just think if somebody says you if i if look at me if i say you that i i i teach this 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 and i have been teaching for last 15 years many things so you'll say okay i'll buy the lectures but in the end i say i don't have lectures just name you will say go bye bye we don't want anything because the brand name with with facilities is must only name only name does can't do anything name with facilities kfc with facilities mcdonald with all services then with all setup then people will pay money otherwise nobody will pay otherwise you can't generate cash flows not getting so it is openly written in the in the in the ifrs that brand name are not cgus because a separate brand listen to me a separate brand cannot generate independent cash flows separately yes it can generate cash flow with the combination of facilities oh did you understand this point reply to me please all of you please reply at least uh, this is my tip if you reply it it's my tip okay so the concept is a separate brand a separate brand is not a, is not a cgu because it cannot generate independent cash flows yes it can generate with other with the combination of other facilities so now what we do what we do for example we have listen to me and open your eyes open your eyes open your mind we have a brand one brand uh, let us say kfc we have one brand kfc and we have 15 shops 15 separate shops with that are generating cash flows so yes you can allocate this is allowed you can allocate your brand to different cgus it is written in your book as well you can allocate that brand to different cgus on whatever basis you want different basis you want <coughs> so then then this is fine or if you cannot or if you cannot allocate the brand to separate cgus then you can allocate to group of cgus as well that is all, to, to group of facilities group of cgus yes but never ever think that a separate brand name is a cgu no because separate brand name never generates independent cash flows okay so two issues to discuss in point number 1 in b point number 1 in b point number 1 two issues to discuss read it read it don't sleep these are last days of your exams the first issue the answer is yes the brand will be the brand the brand can be recognized separately from goodwill see this diagram see this diagram all of you let me enlarge see this if if brand has a separate value yes you can you can record it you can record it okay so let me let me discuss with you students dear students look at here see this requirement b part 1 <coughs> 
the jangi brand meets the definition of intangible asset because it will give it will give future economic benefit through increasing sales volume yes if you have if you have the question if you have the question you can read it it's uh, september december 2020 listen 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 we what was what was our intention in acquiring jangi jangi brand that it's a very super hit brand so definitely we'll work on volumes now we'll work on volumes now we'll get synergies we'll get synergies so yes this brand will give us economic benefit through increasing sales vol well volume and brand image now you know in the criteria and conditions of intangible assets you guys have studied that you must have control you must have control over that intangible asset so it's not difficult see this control over these economic benefits can be established through registration of the brand you just you just you know when you acquire when you acquire certain company you do you do paperwork when you acquire a certain business you do paperwork that from now onward this belongs to me so yes if you get if you if you have done all the paperwork if you have done all the paperwork registration work then it's safe then it's safe it's your brand so yes then you then you can control then you can control the economic benefit very easily that's why it is it should be recorded separately from goodwill and should be recorded at fair value should be recorded at fair value this is the answer of the first line this is the answer of the first line be confident student uh giving you one word treat yourself as a winner treat yourself all of you treat yourself just think that you guys have cleared the paper and you are going to clear the paper just think be confident don't think negative these ending days are very important for you mm. now one more thing now then you have to write you know in your question you have to write the state the rule state the rule you have to write the is as well so now i am giving you pointers from now onwards in solution i'll giving you just pointers okay you are no more kids be active now next thing is definition of cgu which i just told you right definition of smallest group of identifiable assets that generate independent cash flows and not and are not dependent on other assets right now now this this thing is very important i have just discussed with you during the question discussion brands are not separate cgu because brand does not work alone without associated manufacturing facilities and other assets i told you that just the name of mcdonald won't give you any earning you have to you have to give service with back in inside the mcdonald right that's why brand would be separately identified and valued it should now it should be allocated to each of corbels corbel cgu that are expected to get benefit from synergies of the combination now go slow wait these last lines are very important i told you listen because we have acquired this brand and because of this new brand name our sales will go up because of this new brand name our sales will go up so for example listen we have acquired this brand name in italy for example it's just an example we have acquired this brand name in italy and outside italy nobody knows this brand name outside italy nobody knows this brand name only italy people knows and let us say we have 20 branches in italy let us say for example just for just for your understanding let us say we have 20 branches in italy so all 20 branches of italy will get benefit from this brand name because we have acquired it so now we we'll, we will apportion these brand name on only italy branches not getting now read it that's why brand name would be separately i would be separately identified and valued it should be allocated see this is the treatment this is the treatment allocated to each of corbel corbel is the parent company company cgu 
that are expected to get benefit from synergies of that combination from synergies of that combination from synergies of that combination now one extra line if brand cannot be allocated to individual cgu then is 36 permits to allocate brand to group of cgus yes there are combinations of cgus you can allocate to them as well you cannot you can allocate to them as well this is also allowed okay so this was the this was the treatment it's not difficult it's not difficult you just need your attention just need your attention did you understand please reply all of you please reply all of you are you with me are you with me now listen now let's go to the third requirement third requirement is my favorite requirement is the easiest requirement easiest listen this requirement six marks sometime i say free marks see this these are free 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 these are free marks these are believe me student these are free marks because it came previously they repeated this you know in my routine lectures i have discussed this issue those who are my students they are attending they know this i have discussed this issue when i was when i whenever i teach is 38 even in f7 level in fr level whenever i teach is 38 i give this example whenever i teach is 38 i give this example and the same example they have given after 12 years see the repetition yes i got the name celtech this was the name in 2008 the past paper name was celtech still you can verify you guys and can check celtech was the past paper in 2008 it came in 2008 same thing they have given you again and six marks six marks is not a joke you just need 50 to pass that's it the first objective is to cross the border is to cross the border line now let me discuss you in very detailed style please look at me and concentrate concentrate please don't use your phone nothing just you and me dear students there is an issue that intangible assets may have finite life may have indefinite life listen may have finite life indefinite in indefinite life finite life means which cannot which can be calculated finite life means that you can you can calculate the economic benefit you can see the end point for example you will get the benefit next 5 years or 4 years or 3 years okay so in case of finite life you amortize listen to me very carefully you amortize your intangible asset yes from the date when it is available for use you amortize your intangible asset from the date when it is available for use in case of finite life now in case what is indefinite life indefinite life is the life in that case you can't you can't calculate the end point you cannot calculate the ending point of economic benefit that till how many years you will get economic benefit or you can say that indefinite life is the life is the life which cannot be calculated which cannot be calculated listen in case of indefinite life you don't need to do any amortization you can't do you don't need to do amortization and you can't do amortization even you can't do amortization you can't do amortization because there is no finite number of life but in case of indefinite life you need to do impairment testing at least annually at least annually impairment testing is must please do student look at me at least annually impairment testing is must at least annually impairment testing is must
okay at least annually impairment testing is must or whenever you get impairment hint yes this was the introduction now now the real issue real issue listen how to how to how to decide how to decide whether this brand or whether this intangible has finite life or indefinite life whether this brand has finite life or indefinite life listen you first of all you need to check first of all very important important part of the, my lecture now first of all you need to check the past performance of that brand that how that brand worked how that brand defeated the competitors how that brand cleaned the market cleaned the market uh so for example there is a brand name coke have you heard about coke yes all of you so coke came in this world in 1886 1886 1886 almost 136 or 137 138 years back coke came and you can see that coke is not a technological product it's a drink it's eatable it's a drink so when it is not related to technology that means less risky plus the past performance the perception of people that coke is king so can you guys can you guys i challenge you all of you can you guys calculate the finite life of coke can you guys calculate the finite life the ending point of the brand of coke no no we cannot we cannot we cannot so if a brand is very super hit in past if a, listen if a brand has defeated many competitors in past if the brand is non technological brand that means not dependent on technology listen listen if the brand if the brand has good future as prospect and one more point if we are the acquirer if we are as a acquirer ready to ready to invest in that brand if we are as an acquirer ready to ready to do input in that brand that means that brand has indefinite life okay you got it so these were the general factors now let's go specific let's go specific please one minute sorry i am taking your time see this acquisition of perfume brand students please the first perfume locust the first perfume see this the first perfume the first perfume locust has been sold successfully for many years i gave you example of coke oh, it's very old and has an established market the second new perfume perfume which has been named after a famous actor clara who intends to promote the product now great student in my eyes as per my perception the first brand has indefinite life because it's very established brand working for many years there is nothing about technology or such things right okay nothing yes perfume is non technological thing perfume is not a technological based thing right plus plus they, it looks like they have established market so that their their future is also bright so the factor says that it has in, in indefinite life yes i can go for indefinite life but but the second brand is named after a film a, a, a famous actor 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 who intends to promote the pro product now listen to me actor is a human being actor is a human being and human being has a finite life <laughs> actor is human being and human being has finite life so once once the fame of this actor will go down as this brand is connected to the fame of that actor once the fame of that actor will go down the brand will go down and one day definitely this actor will die so in that case in that case the second brand looks the second for second brand i should say it's finite life right okay because it is dependent on this human being did you guy got uh, understood the understand please reply please reply just just few point now let me show you the pointers now i i have just given you i have i have just written the pointers okay listen this so first of all you in this case you need to write the definition you need to write the definition of listen you need to write the definition of indefinite life okay and finite life which i just told you then 
you need to discuss the amortization issue of indefinite life and finite life in finite life yes you do amortization in finite life yes you do amortization once it is available for use once the intangible asset is available for use in ind indefinite life you don't do any amortization but yes do impairment testing but you do impairment testing there is a question there is a question that sometimes yes sometimes when when some actors dies their brand still exists but for that case it should be written that that listen that brand name has created is has its own value there should be these hints should be given in the question these hints should be given in the question so listen to me and if you have read the examiner report or if you have read listen to me the sessions conducted by teachers training sessions conducted by acc uk so they have clearly said this that in sbr paper that's the positivity of sbr there is a leg there is a headroom available headroom means multiple solutions are also expected accepted they accept multiple solutions so if somebody there is uh, one student has given me a point that if somebody sometimes it happens that after the death of that actor the brand goes on the brand goes on or brand gets more sympathy from the death yes it happens so you can write it as an exception it is an exception but when the 2008 question came it was clearly written in that 2008 question that whenever the movies whenever the movies of this actor get get promotion get good value the brand also goes up and whenever the movie gets flop the brand gets flop so that means in that case in that case and in and it's human this guy is human that means that market perception is connected to that human guy that's why okay now next thing impairment testing issue you need to discuss impairment testing issue then one very important issue let me explain you the review of life review of life you know this is the speciality of ifrs international accounting international financial reporting standards that whatever things are estimation based whatever things are estimation based you need to you need to value at at the end of each year like in is 16 like in is 16 you need to revise you need to check you need to revise the live useful life you need to revise the scrap value residual value at the end of at the end of each year this is the requirement of is 16 listen so just think listen look at here for example i bought brand hair i bought brand on 1st of january 2020 all of you look at here i bought brand on 1st january 2020 right now i acquired a team of expert and i and i gave them data that check the life they said the life is indefinite the life is indefinite we cannot calculate we cannot see the end point but after one year see this this is 1st of january 2021 now after each reporting date after one year new information new information will come new info will come new info will come so maybe after one year when you provide this new info to your staff to the experts they may say yes now the life is remaining life is 10 years okay so this is possible that in past in last year the 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 life was indefinite but this year the circumstances have changed there is some new information regarding you there is some new law has been passed okay then then you can if if the if if you cannot if you can calculate the finite life then it's fine then it's fine and then from this date from this date you need to start amortization from this date you need to start amortization okay so this issue you need to discuss as well that review of life review of life at the end of each reporting date now then then after that you need to discuss factor considering for finite and indefinite life 
I told you the technological factors that whether your brand is dependent on technology or not, power of brand, how much we are going to support that brand, how much we are going to support we, we as an acquirer, how much we are going to support, support that brand. And you know, not in case of Corbel, this point was negative in case of Corbel. Corbel, Corbel bought these brands just for defensive purpose. Corbel, Corbel, the parent company acquired these brands just for defensive purpose, just so that the competitors do not acquire them. So this point goes against that we are not going to invest anything or we are not going to take interest in these brands because we have just acquired for, so that our competitors cannot see them. Then risk associated with that brand. Finally, you need, you know how to write it application. In the end, you write to application. You do you have to do application. So for Locust Perfume, the first Locust Perfume brand, you will comment. You will finally give the final answer as indefinite life. And for Clara Perfume brand, you will write finite life. You will write finite life. Whatever I taught you, whatever I told you, in the same way. You got it? You got it, students. Now nothing difficult is left. IFRS 5 is easy. IFRS 5 you can easily understand. You can easily got it. Now, this paragraph, this para, all of you please, all of you. No, 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 no. One student is saying that if we only write the application thing, no, 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 no. You have to write a little bit of state the rule. If you cannot write like me, still you need to write some points of state the rule. That's part of the strategy. But yes, listen. But if you are running short of time, for example, you have just half an hour and you have to complete the whole question, then write the application only. Yes. Read this paragraph, please. All of you, all of you read, read it, please. Listen, Corville company approved and announced a plan to close and sell all six. See a very important word, all six. I'm especially underlining all six Italian stores on 31st December X7. Close and sell all six on, on one date. One shot, six store in one go. See this, see the words all six stores in one go on one date on one date in one transaction one short sale this is giving me hint of one new word and this is disposal group i repeat go slow Corbel company approved and announced a plan to close and sell all six Italian stores, all six, all six, see the word, on 31st December, that means all six on one day, on one day. You know, you know the definition of disposal group, let me explain you, just think. Disposal group means you are selling two assets or you are selling three assets, you are selling two or three assets you are selling two or three assets in one go or three asset one liability in one go four asset one liability four chairs one liability in one go in one shot if you are selling combination of assets in one go then it meets the definition of disposal group this is written okay so you need to write this definition in this question <coughs> now the six stores will close after a liquidation sale which will last for three months 
management has committed to a formal plan formal plan cis 37 restructuring is 37 restructuring criteria is 37 restructuring provision formal plan word i i'm sure you guys know about it for the closure of six stores and has also started an active search for a single buyer single buyer this is held for sale and see once again single buyer means disposal group single buyer will buy all these things single buyer will buy all these thing no no more multiple buyers that means all things will be sold in one shot the stores are being closed because of the increased demand generated by corbel companies internet sales see this is a very practical issue the whole world this is real life issue this is very common in all countries i can see i can see i can i can i have read many articles on this now people are shifting from physical to online see this you are teaching we are doing right now we have many other country students are also attending so we ourselves shifting from physical to online everywhere this is going on a local newspaper has written an article suggesting that up to 30 stores may be closed with a loss of 500 jobs across the world over the next 5 years listen the directors of corbel have denied that this is this is the case now this is this line is has some different importance listen listen this is just a newspaper story we have no plan we have last two line just a newspaper story we have no plans or nor our directors have approved it our directors has denied it denied it so no more no more importance of these two lines because we don't have any formal plan for these two lines just a newspaper 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 lines these are just the newspaper lines okay and the directors have have, have denied that this is this is this is the case okay right now wait let's read let's read the next requirement how to account for the proposed closure of the six stores and suggested closure of the remaining stores they have not written any name they have not written any name wait but i am telling you ifrs 5 and is 37 and some discussion on is 36 impairment okay ifrs 5 and is 37 now wait look at me first of all you know discontinued operation discontinued operation if if these shops meets the definition of component of an entity if these shops meets the definition of component of an entity component of an entity means if if separate cash flows or revenues and cost are can, can may be calculated for financial reporting purpose yes if they meets the definition of component of an entity and they represent a separate geographical line of business yes six stores are too much six stores are too are material stores so yes in that case in that case in the in the income statement they will be reported as a discontinued operation in the income statement they will be reported as a discontinued operation right okay so i'm sure you know that one thing is hfs one thing is held for sale and one thing is discontinued operation all of you look, look at here one word is held for sale one word is held for sale and the other word is discontinued operation held for sale is connected to sofp current or non current asset right and discontinued operation is connected to soci this is the very basic thing held for sale is connected held for sale is connected to sofp that current asset thing and discontinued operation is primarily connected to soci so first of all just think previously you think with the with the view of shareholders listen previously our shareholders were seeing that we are a very big we are a company with many branches but now from from now onwards from next years we we won't have these much branches our major branches six seven branches physical branches are closed so now we should report this to shareholder that the, this operation is discontinued this operation is discontinued and please don't expect 
please don't expect anything from this operation okay so discontinued operation accounting for income statement is appropriate here okay now next thing is held for sale held for sale for held for sale one word is very important i'm sure you 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 are aware about the definition of held for sale held for sale are those assets held for sale are those assets which principally gives which principally gives economic benefit through a sale transaction not from continuing use that means the word sale the word sale is very important go and check the question see go and check the question they they have, see, see 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 this the word sell yes the word sell is there the word sell is there right plus see this active search see this this that means that means held for sale criteria is also met held for sale criteria is also met see the indication of sale is there indication of sale is there so you need you need to discuss little bit in theory it's not a practical question you need to discuss little bit of hfs accounting you need to discuss little bit of hfs accounting as well let me let me recall you whenever whenever you classify any asset or any group of assets whenever you classify any asset or any group of asset and held for sale first of all you do impairment testing using is 36 first of all you do impairment testing using is 36 then after impairment testing you use using is 36 this is called before classification impairment testing then you shift then you shift that asset then you shift that asset in held for sale hfs current asset and after shifting to current asset after shifting to held for sale there is very simple rule recorded at lower of recorded at let me write recorded at lower of lower of carrying value and fair value minus cts fair value minus cost to sell right after shifting to held for sale once you shifted it to held for sale you recorded at lower of carrying value and fair value less cost to sell and this is the criteria of ifrs 5 this is the criteria of ifrs 5 okay so students you need to write this these things as well and these things we teachers teach in class we teachers teach in our normal class normal ifrs 5 lecture this is all included okay so i'm just using the words that's it now one more thing as as this as the management has announced has as the management has announced the closure closure so listen as the management has announced the closure so this is also the impairment hint the announcement of closure is also impairment hint so that's why the impairment testing is must you can write this line as well now let's let's touch is 37 let's touch is 37 you know whenever you close whenever you close the branches that means you are going to fire you close the branches six branches major branches that means that means you are going to fire many employees you are going to cancel many many tenancy agreements many tenancy agreements so yes this is the clear hint of restructuring this is a clear hint of restructuring now for that you need to make restructuring provision as well now students what is the criteria for making restructuring provision what is the criteria for making restructuring provision number 1 you must have detailed formal plan yes it it is already there see you must have detailed formal plan and number 2 you have created valid expectation to those affected you have created valid expectation to those affected see they have created valid expectation see this active search of the buyer active search of the buyer the stores are being closed and yes some 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 stores are already closed so that means everybody can see that they are going to close the stores so automatically the valid expectation has been created automatically the valid expectation has been created so for is 37 for is 37 restructuring provision for is 37 restructuring provision there are two conditions number 1 detailed formal plan it's already there number 2 you have created valid expectation to those affected right so this thing you have to write and yes we'll make the restructuring provision finally 
one one last line one last two lines this thing can you see this there a, a local newspaper has printed this story that this company is going to close 30 stores this company is going to close 30 stores and there will be 500 jobs will be lost can we make provision can we make provision by by this news only by this by this news of by this by just this news of newspaper no never never think over it because is 37 says is 37 says you must have detailed formal plan no no more formal plan for last two lines and you have created valid expectation no more valid expectation even the director director has denied director has denied that this is not the case this is false news okay so last two lines no importance and no more no more restructuring provision no more held for sale nothing no accounting for last two lines no accounting for last two lines if you approach the question in this way you can do it you can do it think positive be be confident that you can you are you can, these are general discussion these are general discussion you have you guys have studied last 3 4 months lot of accounting you have done <coughs> now let me show you some pointers i told you i can only give you now pointer c in this question just for the state the rule in the starting question you write to you need to write the state the rule you have to write the hfs criteria little bit hfs criteria and their impairment testing issues impairment testing issues i told you before and after before and after classification okay then component of an entity yes discuss about that this these stores if these stores are component of an entity and as this represents separate separate geographical area of operation that's why in the income statement in the income statement they will be reported as discontinued operation in the income statement they will be reported as discontinued operation then after that disposal group definition disposal group definition one point which we picked which we picked that they are looking for a single buyer who buys everything together who buys everything together and i told you what is disposal group when you sell few assets few liabilities or just few assets in one shot in one shot then it's disposal group okay now approval and announcement of closure of stores is hint of impairment is hint of impairment now wait for example i have 10 stores very interesting point i am raising all of you all of you please invest some time for example i have 10 stores and i have announced that i am going to close six stores i have 10 stores and i have announced that i am going to close six stores so it means the remain there is some problem with the remain there is some problem with the sales company is not going good so some there is now the remaining four stores we have to do the impairment testing for remaining stores as well because the overall business is affected that's why company is going down company is closing stores okay then after that i just told you restructuring provision discussion i told you this i have not written here i am just writing pointers now pointers you have to do it yourself okay restructuring provision detail formal plan and all yes restructuring provision then is 36 discussion and finally newspaper newspaper is just a rumor it's not a formal announcement that's why no restructuring provision no constructive obligation is there okay so the last point the last two lines you don't need to do any accounting for that you don't need to do any accounting for that
yes there is one question sir impairment testing will be done for the remaining stores yes why because they have started closing the stores that means there is something bad going going with the company right now very last last paragraph and last issue last paragraph and last issue please be with me it's i will give you some practical examples of real life real life in this corbel company's primary store is located in central paris corbel company's primary stores is located in central paris it has recently been opened at a significant cost with the result that management believes it will make a loss in the current financial years very important line management already think it will make a loss this is the perception of management management is ready management is ready for this loss i will use this line in my solution little pointers management already expect that the loss is loss is there because of bad economic conditions simple because when people gets lower income they don't buy expensive perfumes you got it right now it's time of a recession right now it's a it's a sort of bad time because of covid they have not used the word covid but i am telling you just this loss making is not not of concern as the performance is consistent with the expectation again with expectation for such a new and expensive store yes it's very common when you buy when you buy paris is very expensive students rents are very high and if you buy on paris main streets then do expect this loss do expect this loss and they are expecting they are expecting and management believes that the new store will have a positive effect on car corbel's brand image see this just think you know sometimes we 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 open such stores on big streets like champs elizes street paris very famous street istiklal street turkey orchard street singapore and so many in new york there is one street in california la la there are some famous streets so sometimes you open very expensive stores on on that street and that stores normally gives you loss because of you you invest too much but that stores give impression to the whole world that you have store in that street champs elise you have store in champs elise street you have store in oxford street london so this sometimes this things gives impression to the whole public you are not getting listen students this is the very real real life real all in strategic level paper they give you real life scenarios this is real scenario sometimes you open stores on the world's most famous streets and you cannot cover the cost from that street you are in loss but but that store gives the impression to the whole public that this is a big brand so you earn from other stores because of this store because of this store you earn from other stores this is very important point i'll i'll connect it while discussion with in the solution now if impairment testing of the primary store were to be required primary means this main store this store this flagship store paris store then corbel company would include the cash flows see see the corruption now see the corruption from all internet sales in this assessment <laughs> see this should be this is a little bad bad thing when you are doing impairment testing of only that store and why you are including internet sales internet sales is something different that is online online is a separate department wait the goods sold via the internet are sourced from either corbels central distribution center or individual stores from other stores these sales are from other stores internet sales are either delivered to the customer's home or collected by the customer from store supplying the goods this is called store pickup very common all over the world store pickup you guys are well aware store pickup 
sometimes when we order online they give you two options they are either you they deliver at your place or you go to that store and you collect store pickup it's very simple store pickup in and if you do store pickup you your shipping cost your shipping cost is saved your as a customer your shipping cost is saved okay so these are two issues the first issue is the first issue is we have we have opened a very big store on a paris main street like champs elizes street right okay listen and this and we are already ready that th that we'll get lost we are already ready and we are expecting that we will be in loss so this is nothing new the first issue the second issue they are saying when we do impairment testing when we do impairment testing of this store we'll include other store sales in our future cash flows because you know whenever we do impairment testing we calculate viu value in use and for the calculation of value in use we use future cash flows so they are going to include the internet sales and other store sales for this calculation this is totally wrong this is totally wrong this is totally wrong if you are doing impairment testing of this store use the use the sales of this this store okay right but again as a student you may ask one question sir because sir what about this line what about this line see this read this line i have highlighted again sir what about this line that because of this store they will have a positive impact on the brand image because of this store we'll have a positive impact on brand image and others other stores will also enjoy the name the name of the company so how will you tackle this issue how will you tackle this issue i'll tell you i'll tell you don't worry very interesting discussion giving you one minute to read it giving you one minute to read it and analyze it think over it now read the requirement whether the first first issue read requirement very carefully first issue whether the primary store should be tested for impairment at 31st december x7 hold this is the first requirement and whether the internet sales can be attributed to their store to this store this is the second requirement look at me can you look at me listen listen to me you know for assets for intangible assets with finite life and for normal assets we only do listen to me we only do impairment testing when we get the hint of impairment we only do impairment testing students please last requirement this is last for normal assets and intangible assets with finite life we only do impairment testing once we get the hint of impairment wait and there are two types of hint of impairment you have studied in is 36 external and internal hints external and internal hints okay now wait as such we cannot see any hints as such we cannot see any hints in this question please listen my words you will be able to write it you will be able to write the solution as such there is no hints in this question but yes we can make one hint let me tell you you know there is one hint whenever the assets performance is lower than expected we were expecting high performance and the real performance is low we were expecting high performance but eventually the real performance is low whenever this is the case whenever this is the case then yes this is the hint of impairment this is the hint of impairment what is the hint of impairment i repeat whenever the expected performance sorry whenever the actual performance is lower than expected we were expecting more and the actual performance is low so this is the hint of impairment but this is not the case of this question in this question it is openly written in in this question it is clearly written clearly written listen that manager management was already expecting loss and yes they got loss so nothing bad nothing bad so that's why there is no hint of impairment from for for the first point there is no hint of impairment so as as said they don't need any impairment testing but yes but yes 
if they find any other reason in practical life not about this question in practical life if they find any other reason or any other hint then they can do it but apparently in this question apparently in this question there is no hint and the point of loss won't create any impairment hint because we already expect this loss because we already expect this loss and management expectation in line with the actual results it is written so the answer of first question is this the second the second issue is very 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 technical student will ask sir we are we are we are making loss listen to me we are making loss in this big store so that we get a good brand image we are doing loss in this store so that we we get a good brand image and that brand image will ultimately affect all other branches that brand image will ultimately affect all other branches and all other branches will earn so sir sir let's do it other uh, let's do during impairment testing include their sales as well as your own own cash flow no that's wrong they are going to benefit the other stores are going to benefit from our brand from our brand so let's do one thing listen treat this brand treat all these costs which you have just incurred for this for this big setup as a corporate asset treat treat listen to me treat this all expenditure as a corporate asset and allocate that corporate asset to everybody allocate that corporate asset to everybody because everybody is enjoying because everybody is enjoying because everybody is enjoying uh, spread the cost spread a portion the cost of this corporate asset to everybody so in this way in this way everybody will get the share of the cost everybody all other stores will get the share of cost and that share of cost will ultimately affect their pnl one day that share of cost will ultimately affect it will ultimately affect their pnl one day okay so that means when they will get the hint of when they will get the hit of expense so they got the due share but you are strictly not allowed to take their sales as your own sales in in impairment testing calculation because when you are doing impairment of your of of this store this flagship store just include the sales of this flagship store because all other stores are different internet sales is totally different internet sales people uh, order from different locations and they expect the service on their that location they don't want service from that paris store see they 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 are the that that setup is different centralized so the last point in the question was wrong the last point in the question was wrong okay so what i i told you regarding this okay students so now let's let's discuss listen let's see how how you can write it so three three issues i have told you three issues you need to discuss three issues you need to discuss three issues you need to discuss listen three issues the first issue is that there will be no there is no impairment hint there is no impairment hint so no need to do any impairment testing i have already told you the second issue is that yes this loss making unit will benefit all other stores all other stores all other stores so so we will we will apportion so we we will be we will apportion we will apportion this corporate asset to all other stores we will apportion this corporate asset to all all other stores right okay right so that they will get the due share of the cost and they will get the hit in the pnl as well but strictly 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 you cannot you cannot book their sales as your own sales in the in the working of value and use calculation for impairment testing that's not allowed that's not allowed because their sales are different sales their sales are different their own sales right okay let me show you see this first of all in this case you need to write indication of impairment is whether performance see this when whether the performance is worse than expected this issue you have to write store then you'll write store going in line with expectation store going in line with the expectation means no indication of we were expecting the management was expecting loss and yes the exact loss happened so no need no need no need to do no need to book no need to do any impairment testing then as 
other stores enjoying the brand name that's why treat this as a corporate asset and a portion to other stores okay this thing and finally finally you can write finally students you can write you can write that you cannot finally you can write you cannot include sales sorry of internet and other stores as your sale in the calculation of viu okay so these are the major points these are the major points for this these are the major points for this somebody is asking a uh, future operating losses no you cannot make provision for future operating losses and no need to no need to no need to write no need to write about the future of is 37 issue this is not is 37 issue okay student so i tried my best i tried my best to so that you guys can understand uh, if i'm writing my number if somebody does not have my number uh, they can, you guys can contact me on whatsapp okay right so you guys can contact me on whatsapp if you need any help i'll send i'll send this uh, i'll send these slides to you okay take care